Ms. Denise Poir. Thank you, Speaker. I join Minister Edwin Tong in congratulating our Olympians and Paralympians here. And uh, I thought Minister would have made a very good sports commentator because he was so excited when he shared the, the journey and the feat. So uh, thank you, Minister, for, for you know, being so enthusiastic as well. Now, as Minister has mentioned, behind every successful sportsman is that village behind them. So I therefore also joined uh, uh, government in, in commending all the wonderful uh, families, caregivers, coaches, educators, volunteers, national sports agencies, SNOC, SNPC, uh, uh, SDSC, Chef de Mission, uh, uh, Sports SG's, uh, SSI, and you can see we are we're a country of abbrevi uh, abbreviated <laughs> institutions, NYSI, and so forth, and many others, many institutions were involved in this journey to the Tokyo Games. As an advisor to the Purple Parade Organizing Committee, I am really delighted that our Vice Chair, Ping Siu, and uh, Member Max Midlin, I think he's somewhere there, had uh, uh, set foot again on the world stage and proudly representing Singapore and doing Singapore so proud. In the WhatsApp message uh, that we're having, uh, many of the uh, Purple Parade guys are uh, uh, rooting for you and you know, congratulating you. So read that later. Now, watching the games reminded me of the time when I was a young girl, that's a long time ago, chasing the Malaysia Cup, even when I was studying for exams. So holding my books and watching the game on TV, admiring heroes such as the late Muhammad Noor. Now, the, the national team did not always uh, bring home the Malaysia Cup, but I remember we were always proud of our then Team Singapore. So this is the month of the Purple Parade in Singapore, when many supporters of the disability community visibly show their support for inclusion and celebrate the abilities of people with disabilities. So I thought it opportune to bring up the topic uh, of, uh, a, of a debate or a controversy that uh, some people have uh, uh, mentioned before on the difference between cash awards for medaled Olympians versus uh, medaled uh, Paralympians. Uh, persons in the sector, in fact, quipped that uh, this conversation, this debate over price, you know, always occur every four years, uh, often after the, uh, the Games. And uh, the last was in 2016, after the real Games. Proponents calling for equality or parity in cash awards for medalists at the Paralympics and Olympic Games often cited a few reasons. One, that the efforts put in by our sportsmen and women to prepare for the Paralympics is equal to, if not more intense, than the Olymp uh, Olymp uh, Olympics. Second, that Singapore ought to emulate the spirit that's shown by countries that have already equalised the awards, countries such as Japan, United States and, uh, and Malaysia and the like. Now, others defending the, uh, uh, the current difference in awards cited that there is a difference in scope, in depth, or sometimes appeal of the two games. I don't know about that, but there's a difference in, in scope, that's, they, they say. And that private donors and not government are the ones footing the bill for the awards. And therefore, it is they who traditionally felt that the awareness of uh, an, an appeal of sponsoring disability sports is lower than that of mainstream sports, leading to a lower price for medal disabled athletes. So those are the reasons. Now, when I dug deeper into the issue to decide where I stand on this controversial issue, I found that there is more than meets the eye. For this happy occasion, I'll just state some very brief background uh, findings. First up, government, uh, I think Minister has mentioned, I haven't read that part of the speech, no? Singapore government has always maintained its position to invest upstream uh, in overall sports participation and then in grooming sports talent to get to the podium at uh, national, regional, global games under its high performance sports system. The government has hitherto have been quite reluctant to use public funds for what it calls post podium awards, especially cash awards. So that's one thing I found out. Now, the second is this the two cash award schemes for medalists are the um, MAP or multi million dollar award for the Olympians and then the uh, AAA, AAA, Athlete Achievement Award for the Paralympians. Now, they are administered by different NGOs or non-governmental bodies, uh, SNOC and SNPC. They have different genesis, they start at different times, and they have different scopes and uh, uh, features. The AAA, 
for the uh, Paralympians is managed by SMPC, Singapore National Paralympic Council for the Para-Athletes. Chairman is the ever-passionate Dr. Tan Ko Sok Myon. I think she's there or here. Oh. Okay, Dr. Tan Ko. And uh, the Olympians are, of course, uh, governed by the SNOC, Singapore National Olympic Council, chaired by none other than our also very enthusiastic speaker, Tan Chuan Jin. Uh, both NGOs separately negotiated for the prize awards at different times, much later for the para-athletes, and then uh, managed to get very different, uh, quite different sponsorships. Uh, 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 so there are some features. For instance, under the MAP, a goal-winning Olympian may win $1 million, but will not get more if he scores uh, more than one, another gold medal. Then for the Paralympians, a goal-winning para Paralympian, on the, other, on, the, on the other hand, will earn a 200000 award each time he or she wins a goal. Uh, so the whole system is not quite neat at all and, and uh, bears a review. Now I have a call for action. Now as Singapore strives to become more inclusive and as Singaporeans ask for more parity, they speak up, are more articulate about inclusion and they want more equality amongst differently abled sports talent, it is time to bite the bullet to change the game. Don't wait for the Paris Games in 2024 in a few years' time to revive this conversation and debate again. Let us start to rewrite the headline of the past decades, always comparing inequality in price money for Olympians versus Paralympians, making it sound like government is so heartless, Singapore, Singapore is so heartless and not supportive of inclusion. And as one of the advocates for, this, for the disabled, I, I know this to be far from true. So in this regard, I call for government to weigh in, to facilitate the process, to reimagine, to review and to resource not only, of course, the high-performance disability system, uh, the disability sports system, but also to widen the uh, sports participation, to widen the, the Thailand pipeline through greater sports participation. Now, at another occasion, this is a happy occasion, and, uh, but another uh, occasion, I shall ask for an update uh, uh, from the minister uh, for an update to the disability sports master plan, including the need for a, a dashboard, developing a dashboard and review of the structure and the systems so that there is parity in both form and substance. Speaker, the, so the, the time indeed has come. Singapore has adopted and ratified the United Nations Convention for the Rights of Persons with Disabilities to grant equal rights to the disabled. Our country has moved decisively in the last decade or more to narrow the gap between persons of different abilities in the important realms of life in education, healthcare, transport, employment. Uh, we're still doing that, we're still having a ride, but we're doing that. So let us make a statement in sports, you know, make sports accessible, inclusive and prevalent for all persons with disability in Singapore and change the headline, you know, from, uh, uh, from what we always debate about after every major game, you know, about disparity to equality and to, to uh, something more uh, positive and exciting. So in cl conclusion, sir, uh, let me return to Minister Edwin's uh, uh, motion of congratulating our beloved team Singapore. Today, this House formally honour and thank the Olympians and Paralympians who did us so proud at the Tokyo Games. Medal or not, you have accomplished a feat that many of us can only dream of achieving. We who mostly merely cheered you in the comforts of our homes, watching our phone or, or TV screens, owe you, your family, coaches, your family's coaches and support teams, we owe you much. So take heart whether you are medal or not. As the U.S. President, former U.S. President Roosevelt famously said in his speech, Citizenship in a Republic, he said this, and it's one of my favourite quotes, and I know that it's actually repeated by some coaches before they go for games, and uh, he, part of the extract says this, the extract says this, the credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there's no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fail while, tr while daring greatly. Indeed, the credit belongs to you, our dear Olympians and Paralympians, who in your journey to sports excellence must have tried, fallen, rose, tried again and again. And uh, not many could have done that, not many could have seen that. So take heart whether you're medal or not. 
Of course, Peng Siu is our, our pride and joy, but also all the others who have just made such a difference. And uh, uh, I hope, uh, like what Jabez has said, no, let's take, he take heart, the rest of Singapore, that we have a culture that's also supportive, whether our, our, our representatives are uh, uh, medal or, or make it to the podium or not. As long as they try their best, I think that's part of our Team Singapore family. So thank you. You have placed a small nation like ours on the world stage. You have helped our country punch way above uh, our weight in this uh, space. And for that, we honour and salute you. Congratulations.